at the hour. We are, we are at the place where we need, to, we need to launch forth with courage. We are at the place where we need to launch for, forth with, with all of the passion that we can muster, with all of the zeal and the love and the hope and the, that, we can, that we can send forth because there is a world out there that is longing to be where we are today. My God, sin sick world that's hungry for what we have here today. My God. My God. When we get outside of ourselves and we start reaching for those that we don't even know their names, we don't know their faces, they're not kin to us, they're not, some, they're not one of our relatives or cousins, and we start reaching beyond our own small world of influence and saying, God, I want to care about the people you care about. God, I want to reach the people you want me to reach, God. My Lord, that's when the apostolic church can transcend into that next dimension. That's when we can launch out and begin to impress. That's when we can be a lifeline to the nations. Mighty God. Mighty God, what a powerful move of the Holy Ghost that is in this place this morning. Satoriane. Satoriane. Hallelujah. I want you to put your hands together and worship the Lord one more time. I know we forgot. We didn't forget, but we just, we're going to take our offering at the end of service today. So we want you to please hold your offering until the end of service today. We will be taking that before we dismiss this afternoon. I'm going to be reading now the book of Luke, chapter 15. A very familiar passage of scripture to most of us. I'd like to give honor to my bishop and my first lady of the house today. It's a great privilege and an honor to be serving with them. Amen. It's a great privilege and an honor to be serving amongst the great people of God. Amen. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, I am a servant of the Most High God. Hallelujah. If we get that straight in our minds, a lot of other problems are resolved for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 15. I'm going to start with verse... I guess I'll start with verse number one. So give a little bit of background, a little bit of clarity to what's going on here. If you have it, say amen. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and the sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors. Whew. I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Saying, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which is lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. More than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is, the, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Oh my God, I'm going to preach to somebody this morning in this place that you're more valuable than you even realize. I want you to lift your hands and voices right now and give the Lord a shout of praise right now. Come on, lift your hands and your voices right now and just begin to give him some praise in the house of the Lord today. 
God, we thank you for the privilege and the honor, Lord, to come before you today. God, we thank you for the privilege and the honor to serve you today, God. Lord, we worship you in this house today and we lift up your holy name. In the name of Jesus, we worship you. If you're going to help me, you can clap your hands as you're seated this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for your mercy today. I want to preach to somebody this morning that you're more valuable than you even realize. The devil would love to tell you that you're unimportant and no one cares about the plight of your life or the circumstances or the situation that you're in. But the truth of the matter is, is that we serve a God that loves you so much that he would have stepped down from heaven if you had been the only one that needed saving. My Lord, what a thought when the king of glory robed himself in flesh, came through the back door of humanity, toiled on this earth for 33 years and then died on the cross so that people like you and like me, unworthy sinners, could have a chance to be reconciled back to the throne room of grace today. (laughs) Hallelujah. Mighty God. Each and every time the enemy would come against you, I have a word for somebody today that you are more valuable to the kingdom of God than you even realize. You're more valuable than your neighbors think that you are. You're more valuable than your husband or your wife thinks that you are because all of the value that this earth could put upon you could never match the honor and the glory that is bestowed upon you. For the scripture says that there is joy in heaven when one sinner comes to repentance. Come on, the world would love to beat you up and to tell you that if you, your, your salvation doesn't make much difference. You're just a small speck in the whole spectrum of things. But I'm, so, I'm talking about a God that is reaching for somebody this morning that is trying to reach in deep into your spirit and undo those lies that the enemy has been trying to tell you. And he's trying to make you realize and understand that you are so important to the kingdom of God that he came and he robed himself in flesh so that you could have salvation. You're more valuable than you think. This parable is this, these three parables that are told in this chapter. The lost sheep and the lost coin and the lost son tell the same story in three different manners. They are Jesus talking to the scribes and the Pharisees because of their attitude concerning the publicans and the sinners that drew near unto him to find their salvation, that drew near unto him to hear the words of the master. And whenever he began to to speak these parables, it wasn't for the ears of those sinners, but it was for the ears of the church. But I want to speak not just to the church this morning, but I want to speak to those who have a sinner's heart today that they need to, you need to, understand and to realize that Jesus cared so much for you that he paid the ultimate sacrifice so that you could be saved. You're so valuable that he's going to stop what he's doing and he's going to look for you in the midst of everything that he's got going on, he's not too busy to light a candle. And he's not too, he's not too busy to diligently sweep out the house and find that one lost coin and to pick you up out of the dirt and out of the mire and the circumstances that you're in. And he's not too busy to dust you off and to restore you back to that place which you belong, that place where you came from, that place where your most value will be realized back with the other coins back in the house of God My Lord. Ah. I'm preaching to somebody this morning that God wants to let his love and light begin to shine into your situation he wants to pick you up and dust you off Amen. He wants to give you a new lease on life. I'm preaching to somebody this morning 
that you've been lost and you know and you, you've been lost for a long time and you, maybe you're a wayward son or a, maybe you feel like you're a lost sheep or a lost coin or that prodigal but whatever your situation you know that the Lord's been searching diligently for you because you can't get away from that love every time you lay your head down at night you feel him calling to you saying I want you to come home I'm ready to restore you I'm ready to pick you back up I'm ready to put you back in your place all you have to do is let me know that you're ready and I'm pursuing you I'm searching you out I'm looking for you the spirit of heaven is going forth throughout this region and throughout this land today and he's calling backsliders home he's telling you that you're more valuable than you even realize you're more valuable than you even realize hallelujah when the devil comes against you and tells you that you've gone too far and you've done too much to ever be forgiven, you need to remember the words that I'm preaching this morning, that you're more valuable than you even realize and understand. When the accuser or the brethren would tell you that nobody loves you, nobody cares, I want you to think about this message this morning. Remember that we serve a God that loves you more than you could ever even comprehend. Hey, you little lost sheep, Jesus is looking for you this morning. Come on, I'm preaching. Jesus is looking for that lost sheep this morning. He's walking up and down the aisles of this, of this sanctuary today and he's saying, come home. It's time for you to make your way back to the house of God. It's time for you to make your way back to the place of safety. It's time to get yourself back in the fold before the hour gets too late. Jesus has been walking up and down those craggy, steep hills of this world, calling your name. His spirit has been calling to your spirit, saying, come home, come home. It's time to come home. He's searching for you in all of the usual hiding places, in the cares of this life, in the, th in the vines and the things that would try to entangle you and cause you to be lost. He, he's, he's asking everybody if they've seen you, do you know where my lost sheep is? I'm preaching to somebody this morning that the devil's been trying to tell you that you're not as valuable to the shepherd as you once were because you're lost and you're damaged goods and you can never be restored. But I came to tell you that he loves you. And even as I speak this morning, he's calling your name, saying, come home while there's still time. My God, if you're that lost land this morning and you've wandered away from the flock, I've got some good news. The shepherd is still looking for you. He hasn't gave up hope yet. You say, Brother Jeremy, I don't know how to get back to the flock. I'm lost. I've been away for so long. Let's think about it this morning. He's not waiting for you to come back to get to the flock, but he's out there looking for you. He's pursuing you. He's calling out. He's searching for you diligently. He's trying to find you. He could bring you back to that place of harmony and unity. He's trying to bring you back to the fold. It's a dangerous place to be, church family. Outside the fold, that is. There are predators out there that the shepherd cannot protect you from. There are pitfalls and unforeseen dangers when you get off of the path of righteousness. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody. It's a place of hunger because you have no shepherd to make you lie down in the green pastures. It's a thirsty place because you don't have anybody to lead you beside the still waters. I'm preaching to somebody that you almost believe the lie of the enemy that nobody loves you and you are unsavable. But I'm preaching to you that there's somebody who cares about you this morning. And when the desperation begins to creep into your spirit and you've heard, you can hear that voice of the shepherd just softly calling you in the distance. Come home, come home. Where are you this morning? You are more valuable than you think this morning. You've been bought with the blood of Jesus. It's already been spilled. The atonement's already been made. And all you have to do is be born again of the water and the spirit like the scripture says. 
be brought back into the fold and renewed in that experience in your life. Verse number 6, chapter 15, verse number 6 says, And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I'm going to talk to somebody this morning. Even though you've been a long way, he never stopped calling you his. Even though you've been a long way away from home, he never stopped calling you his. He said he called his friends and his family members together. And he said, rejoice with me. He said, for my sheep, that one that I've been looking for all this time. You've been knowing I've been going up and down the highways and byways. Looking for him, pursuing him in the play as he goes about his life. But my sheep, I found him. I didn't leave him out there to just to lead him back. But no, I picked him up. And I laid him on my shoulders and I'm going to carry him back to that place of safety. Maybe you feel like you're in a place today where you're too weak to make it back. And I've got good news for you. All you have to do is give the shepherd a little indication. And he's going to pick you up. He's going to go. He's going to follow that voice. To that circumstance where yet maybe you you maybe you're broken. Something's broken inside of you. Maybe you're in a place where you can't get yourself back. If you could just begin to call out to him as he's searching these hills of this land, as he's wandering these hills calling for you. He can hear that bleed of that little sheep and he can begin to follow it. He can begin to follow it and the, the process of restoration can begin. You're more valuable than you think today, church family. You're more valuable than you think today, lost friend and loved one. Even if you've never been a part of this church, the Lord still has a claim on you. You're still a sheep that he wants to bring back to the fold. Isaiah chapter 53 and 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. I'm telling you, there's not one person in this room that has not gone astray once in a while like a sheep. We've not wandered outside the protection. We've not wandered outside the fold. But the good news is, is that there has been a good shepherd in heaven that's already took the iniquity. You know what iniquity is? That's unrepented sin. My God, he took the iniquity of us all. You're more valuable than you think you are today. Luke chapter 15 and 7 says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more over the ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy. This is verse number 10. Likewise, I say unto you that there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. I want to just bring something out to you. As I was studying this this week, as I was preparing for this morning's service, I came across this little notation in the James Fawcett and Brown commentary. Listen to what it says. Likewise, that is on the same principle. Jesus was making the comparison in verse number 10. He said, he said, likewise, on the same principle, there was joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Note carefully the language here employed. It is not joy among or on the part of, but it is joy before. It's a, it's a Greek word that says enope. That's the, that's the name. That's how you pronounce it. And it means in the presence of, of the angels of God. True to the idea of the parables, it is the great shepherd, the great owner himself, whose properly the joy is over his own recovered property. 
but so vast and exuberant it is that if he could not keep it to himself, he calleth his friends and neighbors together, his whole celestial family, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, for I have found my property which was lost. It is in this sublime sense that joy is before or in the presence of the angels that they only catch a flying glimpse of the, of the joy as it proceeds forth from God. I'm telling you something this morning, church family. You need to understand that it's not just the angels that are rejoicing in heaven. Just as this, the, the parable was that if the man would, would call his friends and families together and rejoice, God, whenever one sinner comes to repentance, he says, I want you angels to come and look at this. I want you angels to come understand what's happening here because there is some joy because my lost sheep and my lost loved one and my lost family member has been saved it's the joy that proceeds from God the angels don't understand it they've never been a part of it but God said you see what's happening down there that's the reason for it all that's why I went and died on Calvary my God the joy is set before the angels. It's the joy of God exuberating and rejoicing like a man that found his lost coin or like a man that found his lost sheep. God is rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that comes to repentance. I'm preaching to somebody, you are more valuable than you even know this morning. My God, my God. I hope this thought's being delivered clearly. You're so much more important than you even realize. Scripture says that there's joy in heaven. I always took that when I read it before to mean that the angels rejoiced. We're full of joy, but that's not what it's saying. It is saying that there was joy in heaven and it was the joy of God. At one sinner that comes, the joy it comes from that it springs forth and he can't contain himself. The Lord says, oh my goodness. That one I've been looking for, that one I've been searching for, that one I've been calling. My God, I finally got him. I finally made, he finally made his way back. He finally called out. I finally found him. What a thought that is today, church family. My God, each and every one of us are so much valuable than we even think that we are. This chapter told three parables. Each described the same point from a different perspective, from a slightly different point of view. It was because of their attitude toward the sinners that Jesus was preaching this. It was their attitude toward the people that Jesus was associating with. You see, they really had a bigger problem with him than just eating with them and just communing with them. Sister A, they had a bigger problem with Jesus talking to those publicans and those sinners, those people that they felt like were unworthy. They had a bigger problem with it, but they could, their conscience wouldn't allow them to, to, to disallow those publicans and sinners. Their own self-righteousness wouldn't allow them, the repentant wouldn't allow them to begrudge Jesus for the repentance that he was bringing, so they decided to attack him on another front. They said, who is this man? He eats with publicans and he eats with sinners. Look who he's associating with. And why he did those Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes, they didn't have much for those publicans and sinners. Jesus, all along, he said, Oh, goodness, you're missing the whole point. This is who I came for. This is why I came. Not just for the house of Israel, but for the whole world. For the whole Gentile race. For all of mankind. This is what I came for. The last parable in this chapter. The parable of the prodigal son. Luke chapter 15. 
I'm going to skip down to verse number 15. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his field to feed swine. And he would have fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to the servants, Bring him forth the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and the shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted, the fatted calf. And kill, us, kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. And he was lost and is found. I'm preaching to somebody. I'm reaching for somebody this morning. That you're more valuable than you even realize. The situations and the circumstances that you're in in life would try to beat you down. And you've even thought about coming back to the Father's house at times. And I'm fixing to close. You've even thought about coming back to the Father's house at times. And the thoughts ran through your mind. You said, I could, if I could just go back, I can just be a servant. My God, I could just, I could just be there. At least I won't be hungry. At least I won't be thirsty. At least I'll have a roof over my head and clothes on my back. But Lord, have mercy. God of heaven is talking to somebody this morning. And he's saying, I want you to come back this morning, prodigal. But I'm not going to make you come back as a servant. Because you're so much more valuable than you even know. My God, I want you to stand with me this morning. Stand with me this morning. My God, the Holy Ghost is calling today. He's reaching today. He's asking somebody, will you let me take you back to the fold this morning? Come on, I want you to be sensitive. I want you to reach over and slip your arm on somebody's shoulder this morning and ask them, say, are you ready to go back to the Father's house this morning? Come on, I want you to be sensitive this morning and ask Him. Say, are you ready to go back to the Father's house? Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse 11 says, For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, even I will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of the places where they have been scattered in that dark and cloudy day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and will feed them upon the mountain of Israel by the rivers and in the inhabited places of the country. And I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall, they be, shall their fold be. They shall lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountain of Israel. I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away. And I will bind up that which was broken and I will strengthen that which was sick. My God, the Holy Ghost is reaching for somebody this morning. I want somebody to begin to make your way down to this altar right now. As they